book just $30. Artificial hearts in Houston. How long before we're able to take off? Hard to tell. It's socked in now. I'll go check on the forecast. Still determined to go through with this? Save your breath, Zed. You can't talk me out of it. And I hate long goodbyes. Well, let's not say goodbye. Anyway, I don't think you're getting out of here tonight. Fates are against you, Jared. I don't believe in fate. I think we all make our own destiny. Mine's back on Column Bay. Not here. I do have a favor to ask you, Zed. Name it. I want you to keep tabs on Tyler. Let me know how he's doing with the investigation. Are you worried about him? You bet. Harrington's a very dangerous enemy. We'll try to stop Tyler any way he can. Don't underestimate your own son, Jared. Tyler's a pretty dangerous man himself right now. He's out to avenge what he believes to be his own father's murder. Have you heard anything more from Victor? No. No, he's gone underground. I'd like to believe he left the country, but I don't. What the devil's keeping that pilot? A little edgy for a man who's made up his mind. Look, Zed, it isn't easy, okay? I just know I've got to be out of here by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to Mark and Clarissa, the bride and groom to be, may they have a long and happy life. Yeah. Here, here. God bless. Thank you. Nice, Mom. Ah, there you are. I was about to send out a search party for you. Who's Julie? I'm uh, sorry, Mom. It's my fault. I had a meeting tonight. It lasted a little longer than I expected. <laughs> when I got back, Julie wasn't feeling up to coming to the party. If she's sick, maybe I should call her. This is McCandless, but there's someone at the front door with a letter for you. He insists on giving it to you personally. Thank you. Um, Mark, would you get some champagne for Tyler? I'll be right back. Oh, sure, sure. Come on. Mark, I need to talk to you alone. Well, what is it? Julie's disappeared, and she's taken the baby with her. Dearest Clarissa, I'm leaving tonight from Hadley Field at midnight. I know it won't be easy for you to get away, but I must see you before I go. It's very important. Please don't disappoint me. Charlotte. Carnation Instant Breakfast. In regular and no sugar added. You're gonna love it in an instant. Harrington, after many years in retirement, is making a strong bid to return to the Senate. The endorsement came after the dramatic revelation by Congressman Trey Clegg of the existence of an illegitimate son. Well, they sure they didn't waste any time. <clears throat> Should have been you up there tonight. Does it bother you? I have no regrets, really, except that it's kind of a brutal reminder that none of us is irreplaceable. There'll always be someone to pick up the baton and finish the race. But it's not true. I don't think anybody could replace you. <laughs> don't you forget it. I won't. All right, honey. What now? Somehow I can't picture as a gentleman farmer. A businessman. I mean, even an ordinary law practice just seems too small for you. I am still the congressman of my district. Yes, I mean, after your term is over. Who knows? I can't see you giving up the political life. It's too much a part of who you are. I never give up anything I really want. You ought to know that by now. <laughs> yes, I've noticed that. Mm. I meant what I said in my letter. I really do believe that you're meant to do great things, Trey. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Or maybe it's just not for me to decide anymore. Whoa, that doesn't sound like you. Well, I guess I'm, I'm just tired of living my life for that far, distant goal. The White House. Yeah. 
Anyway, all of a sudden, the present seems much more important. Yes? Mm-hmm. More beautiful. And more exciting. I don't want you to have to give up your dreams. You know, sometimes I think you're the only person who really ever loved me. Well, I don't think that's true. But nobody could love you more than I do. You getting excited? I think I'm more than excited. Oh, the medical profession, they call it shock. <laughs> Don't you worry, Mom. We're going to get you there tomorrow. I'm counting on you. You know, the best thing about getting married the second time is that you get to share it with your children. Here, here. I'm just sorry that Sloane isn't here for Mark. Well, she had a rough day. It can't be very easy to watch your husband go on national TV and uh, announce your divorce. All right. Sloan. Sloan, we were just talking about you. I'm so glad you came. Well, I am doing fine, and a matter of fact, a party is exactly what I need. Sloan, you look beautiful. Um, Thank you, Wally. Uh, Sloan, I don't quite know what to say. I'm sorry about what happened but on television. Don't be sorry, okay? In fact, let's not even think about that right now, right? This is a wedding celebration, right? <laughs> Well, I hate to break up this happy little group, but it seems there's one Matt McCandless on the telephone, and he wants to talk to his mother, the bride-to-be. Matt! Well, let's hurry up. He's calling Colette. <laughs> yes, that's Matthew. <laughs> Will you come too, Dad? I'm sure he'll want to talk to you. Oh, this is great, Wally. I love your house. I think some of my happiest times have been spent right here with you. Better than riding around the countryside on a motorcycle? Wally, don't start. Come here. Thomas, will you tell your brother here that he is being impossible and he's making a jealous idiot of himself? I don't know. If I was Wally, I might be jealous, too. Friend Dylan's a very attractive guy. What are you talking about attractive? If you like the type. <laughs> uh, anyways, Brenda, how is your friend? Did you get to the hospital so we could get x-rays? Yeah, we took him in today, and uh, the doctor even said he's going to be okay, but he's just going to take it easy for a little while until he gets over the fever and the infection. Uh -huh. Listen, could you two lovebirds excuse me a minute? Hello, good doctor. This is a very nice party, don't you think? It's great to see you. I didn't think you were going to come. What? Not show up to my own father's pre-wedding bash? Come on, what kind of girl do you think I am? Well, I happen to think that you're wonderful. You took a lot of courage to come here tonight. Not really. Actually, actually, I feel pretty terrific, Thomas. Sloan, it's a brilliant facade. But somewhere underneath there, I'm looking for my friend that I know is hurting. Thomas, you knew about Scotty, didn't you? I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you. Oh, don't be sorry. Trey should have told me about the child a long time ago. I never really had a chance, did I? I mean, I couldn't compete with that little boy. He's Trey's own flesh and blood. Oh, Sloan, I don't know. All I'm trying to say is I know how it feels to be hurt. I, I mean, I'm not trying to say that I've been in exactly the same place as you have, but I know how it feels to be rejected by someone you love. You feel unwanted, not good enough. Maybe that's your experience, Thomas. If it is, I'm very sorry. But I don't feel that way, okay? So don't waste your sympathy on me. Besides, look, this is a wedding celebration, okay? Look, my father and your mother are going to be married tomorrow. Th that practically makes us brother and sister, huh? I, I think that we can definitely drink to that, don't you? Listen, Mark. I really don't want Mother to know about this. She deserves a wonderful day tomorrow. Well, it's going to be kind of hard to keep it from her. Julie should have picked a bad time to disappear. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't... She must have been terrified when that scum showed up at the door, threatening to take Allison away. Where were you? Damn him. Where were you when this Vincent carried it into your house? Talking to Jared Morgan. He said he had some vital information for me, and he wasn't kidding. Well, what is it? He told me Josh Harrington killed my father. What? I mean, he... How? Baxter died in a plane crash. It's a long story, Mark. Turns out Dad was a lawyer. Victor Markham hired to take his testimony back to the old committee. But the plane never made it. Harrington saw to that. Good Lord. Did, did he give you any proof? No. 
No, he wouldn't even reveal the source to me, but that doesn't matter. I have enough information on Harrington to know that he was telling me the truth. So, what's your plan? I'm gonna nail this guy, Mark. I'm gonna nail him for Julie and Allison. For my father. How can I help you with this? Listen, Mark, I gotta get out of here. Do you, do you think you can cover for me? Sure, sure. You're gonna go look for Julie now? I have somebody I can trust that's gonna take care of that. I don't expect to hear anything from him tonight. No. I'm gonna go where I can apply a little heat that's gonna do some good. Well, finally, the pieces are beginning to fit into the puzzle all but one. I know. Jarrett Morgan. How the devil does he fit into this? Plain baked chicken for dinner? Uh, yeah. Well, I need something easy. You could make a complete mushroom chicken dinner just as easy. Oh, please be serious. Chicken Helper makes it easy, because the rice, sauce, and glaze are in the box. <laughs> well, what's the catch? No catch. All you add is fresh chicken. Captain, you shut up, Vincent, and listen to me. Number one, you are to never, and I mean never, bother my wife again like you did. You are not to call her or contact her in any way. You hear me? I'll just pass along a message. Number two, I've got a message for you, and you'd better pass it along to the big guys because they're running out of time. Is that right? I know who they are, Vincent. Do you really? You know something, Vincent? You better consider switching sides. I don't know what you're talking about, Captain. The game is over, Vincent. And I don't think your friends are going to like the way it's ending. Meaning what? Meaning you still have time to come over to our side if you're smart. Or you may never live to pick up that pension. You know, Captain, I don't need any protection. I mean, I'm just a family man trying to do you a good Close turn. Close your lousy mouth and listen to me. I'm going to nail your butt up against the wall. I don't care if it's a parking ticket, drug traffic, or jaywalking. I'm going to find out what it is, and I'm going to haul you in, and you'd better sing, Mr. Vincent. Because that's the only way you're going to get out of this alive. Harrington. McCandless? He's hanging tough. He's not going to give in. I don't want to hear about it. Just take care of it now. Well, Tyler was a little worried about Julie, so he asked me to give you a big kiss and tell you that he was going to see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> There's my father. Clarissa, do you mind if I borrow him for just a minute? <laughs> of course not. I'm going to go say goodnight to Mr. and Mrs. Marshall. I think they're leaving. No. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Missy, Missy, Missy. I'm so glad you're here. Oh. Are you all right? I'm just fine. Hmm. I'm sure. But you're still my little girl, aren't you? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Look, Daddy, um, I don't know if I should bring this up here, but I'm a little worried about Mother. Oh, really? What is she up to now? She's acting a little crazy. Um, Daddy, this morning I found her at the back of the church during the wedding rehearsal. Paula was at the church? Yes, Daddy, and she kept going on and on and on about how this <laughs> wedding should never take place. And she probably trotted out the Jared Morgan story, trying to convince you that Clarissa was in love with him. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, she did. <sighs> well, my darling, you don't have to worry about that at all. Believe me, it's just another one of your mother's fantasies. That's all, to keep Clarissa and me apart. There is nothing to it at all. As a matter of fact, Jared Morgan is flying out of Washington tonight. Daddy, you don't think her mother might do something crazy to her? No, I doubt it. She's not going to take a chance in risking your love. Hope you're right. <laughs> Look, Daddy, I know that I haven't always been your staunchest supporter as far as you and Clarissa are concerned. I understand that, my darling. You love your mother. I can't, but I just want you to know I think that Clarissa is perfect for you. I'm very happy that you're getting married tomorrow. That's wonderful. It means an awful lot to me that you say that. I just, I wish things were better with you. Daddy, I am terrific. Why don't you? Daddy, I love you. Darling. Well, I guess that's it for tonight. <laughs> now, you drive carefully. Ma. 
Brenda. He will. Don't let him drive fast, please. I, I won't. He will. No, you won't. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Good night. Good night, Sloan. Do you want to ride with us? No, my car is waiting. I will see you in the morning. Okay. Good night. Good night. Ciao. Thank Love you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Good night. Hi, Mark. I'm proud of you. Well, my darling, I think really I'd better be going myself. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be right, I suppose, to be caught here on the day of our wedding, huh? Eh? Next time you see me, I'm going to be walking down the aisle. Are you doing? I'm very happy. <laughs> well, good night. Single lady. Good night, single man. Sweet dreams. Dearest Clarissa, I'm leaving tonight from Hadley Field at midnight. I know it won't be easy for you to get away, but I must see you before I go. It's very important. Please don't disappoint me. Charlotte. Hey, snug over here, will you? Mm. What were you thinking just now? Oh, caught in the act. Really? <laughs> Well, actually, I was just thinking about Sloan. I was wondering if she's going to give us any more trouble over the divorce. I really don't think so. I, I, I think she finally got the message today that uh, there's nothing that she will do that will keep us apart. So, shall we forget about Sloan? Oh, I just can't believe she actually went as far as she did. I don't think even she knew how far it would go. But she's the one who did it, so she's going to have to be the one to live with it. I was beginning to think I heard you wrong. Yeah, I had to you... say goodbye to a friend. Oh, would you like a drink? No. You look like you've been to a party. I have been. And you know what? The first of many, many more to come. From now on, I want every night to be a celebration. What's the occasion? I, I am a free agent. I mean, Trey is finally out of my life. My father is getting married tomorrow. Actually, I am a very happy woman. Let's dance. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know that you should be happy, too. Why should I? Yes, absolutely. Why? Why? Because life is very short, Seth. It's much, much too short to waste being miserable. I'm not miserable. No? <laughs> Neither am I, you know that? You know, I have a great life, actually. I'm young, I'm attractive, I'm rich. Oh, Sid, I'm so scared. Let's go for it. Jared? Clarissa? Hi. Joe, give me a few minutes. I, I got your note. I didn't know if I'd get here in time. I didn't send you a note. You didn't? No. But I think I know who did. Paula Dunning paid me a visit earlier, trying to stir up trouble. And I guess she succeeded. Well, maybe I should thank her. Well, since we've already said our goodbyes, I won't keep you. I'm sorry. No, don't be. A little while ago, I was talking with a friend of mine about fate. I told him I didn't believe in it. 
But now I'm not sure. I don't understand. Do you know how close I came to sending you a letter just like this one? For how much I needed to see you just one more time. Why didn't you? I was afraid you wouldn't come. I almost didn't come. What changed your mind? There was a party at my house tonight. But all I could think of was you here tonight leaving. In the terrible way we said goodbye. Something in me said I had to be here. Maybe I came because... Because I thought you needed me. I do need you. each other wrong. Look at me, Clarissa. Oh. Tell me not to go. Tell me to stay, Clarissa, and I will. Oh, I can't. I love you. Please let me go. I love you. Come evening, all the traffic in a logging camp is in the cookhouse. Now we got company. 